88s. Yeah, this is my next episode in my Remember the Calgary series, where I'll talk about Calgary sports teams from the past year. Here we are up to episode number four here, as we'll talk about the Calgary 88s basketball team that was in the World Basketball League. And I would say this is probably the most famous basketball team in Calgary sports history. And I would say closest that Calgary has had to an NBA quality basketball team. As I don't think, at least not in my lifetime, that I don't think Calgary will ever be a big enough market to support an NBA team. And I don't think the culture is here, especially in Western Canada, for basketball or an NBA team, but you never know. But at this point here, I don't see basketball coming back to Calgary anytime soon here. As after the Calgary 88s here, I felt it's been tough to field a basketball team, as you'll see later in the series. And a couple episodes ago, I talked about the Calgary Outlaws, which was a basketball team that followed the 88s here. And speaking of videos in my Remember the Calgary series, you can see my previous episode where I talked about the Calgary Cowboys in the World Hockey Association there. However, I think this will be a little bit of a simpler episode here. As in that episode there, especially in the World Hockey Association, there were teams that moved around and folded here. However, in this episode here, I'm going to say there was definitely less moving around here and actually a lot more success here as the Calgary 88s had a very solid team and some notable alumni that uh, had some NBA connections here. However, there's a very interesting story on why the World Basketball League folded here and hence killed the Calgary 88s suddenly here. And there were a couple teams that held over from this league that went into the National Basketball League, which was a team that the Calgary Outlaws was in, and that league also folded too. So it uh, gives you an idea of shake ground on these some of these minor professional basketball leagues here. So let's get into the Calgary 88s here, and as I say, what inspired me to do my... Remember the Calgary series, as I mostly do talk Calgary sports on my... YouTube channel or make references to it that, uh, you know, I put in the description here where I talked about share my experiences from the Calgary Hitman Corral series, which one of the teams that they were rebranded was the Calgary Cowboys, but also, you know, I found the Sea of Dead clothing on social media. I'm not associated with them or I don't get anything, but uh, they inspired me to do it and they sell Calgary merchandise, sports merchandise, and even some Calgary landmarks in the past there. And that Chris Wilson story where I reacted to on his extensive Calgary jersey collection here. So let's get into the Calgary 88s here. And uh, fittingly that uh, we named the team the 88s here. I mean, there's some examples of teams that are inspired by naming numbers here. Let's say, you know, we're talking about basketball here. The Philadelphia 76ers, you know, inspired from the, you know, what the America Federation in 1776 there. And then there was the Ottawa 67s in the Terry Hockey League, you know, for Canadian Confederation. You could say the Calgary 88s was inspired by the name of the 1988 Winter Olympics, which you can say is the biggest event that Calgary has ever hosted up to date here. Other names they could say, you can, we could have called ourselves the Calgary 75s here, as Calgary was established as a community in 1875 here. Or, you know, maybe the 84s when we officially became a town or 94 or a city. You never know. There was a couple other possibilities there, but the 88s, you know, associated from the 1988 Winter Olympics here. So the overview of the World Basketball League, the WBL here, was a minor professional basketball league that played in Canada and in the U.S. from 1988 to 1992. So the Calgary 88s was in this league the whole time here. It was... Originally founded as the International Basketball Association in November 1987, but then it rebranded as the World Basketball League, as we know, prior to the 1988 
seasoner. And one of the major differences is, as a short guy myself here, I would actually have a chance to uh, be able to play in this league here. As you know, me and I'm only 5'5 five five personally here, and the ladies are definitely telling me. So definitely, you know, puts me even more of a disadvantage when it comes to male sports here. But the big difference in this league here is that there was a height restriction. And the opposite of the carnies where you need to be this tall to ride here. Six foot five was actually the maximum. So this definitely favored more speed and skill here with shorter basketball players here. And then that was raised to six foot seven or two meters in 1991 here. And I my understanding in is that I mean the NBA and basketball has an eight second rule where you have to have the puck or the ball over the center line in eight seconds here. That was also uh in Pioneer and I think there was four ten minute quarters. That's how the games went in the World Basketball League. So it was founded by basketball Hall of Famer, Boston Exalted Great Bob Cousy. He was only six foot one, by the way, they mentioned here, and was the league founder has also Norm Duck Drucker, a twenty five year veteran referee in the National Basketball Association. Primary League and the American Basketball Association, which, similar to the World Hockey Association, was another competing league that happened in the 70s era. And the former supervisor officials of the NBA and served as the WBL supervisor of officiating. One of the league's founders, Michael Monzas, which definitely leads to why the league definitely folded suddenly, was eventually convicted of embezzled $10 million to finance the league from the privately owned company that he founded, far more, and he was sentenced to 11 years in federal prison here. So that's why, uh, you know, the Calgary 88s and the league eventually folded here as the league was embezzled, it was embezzled in a scandal here. And then also that in, in addition to games against other teams in the league, there were some played against some international teams. The league had some previous games on Rogers Television in Canada. They were on Canyon West Global, which is, you know, Global TV. And in the U.S., they were on the Sports Channel America. Mike Rice was the primary analyst for Sports Channel. After the league folded in 1992, the surviving Canadian-based teams formed the National Basketball League, where eventually that was the uh, where the Outlaws played, and they were short-lived too when that league folded here. The league played two seasons before it folded as well here. So uh, that gives you a uh, gist of the league here. So it definitely had a height restriction in terms of not being too tall. So... Maybe I would have potentially had a chance to play in this league, being that I'm only 5'5 myself here, but I would only be a skilled setup player and not someone who does those dunks there. I think the name is Spud Webb. I think if I'm a basketball Hall of Famer, I think he was only 5'1, so he, he could succeed in there. So let's just look at other teams that were in this league here. Well, obviously we're going to talk about the Calgary 88s here. There was also the Chicago Express here. And I'll say the Calgary Eights played at the Olympic Saladum. Chicago Express here played at the Rosemont Horizon. Then there was the Dayton Wings, who was in Dayton, Ohio. They played at the Irvin J. Nutter Center. And then there was the Erie Wave, when they were based out of Erie, Pennsylvania here. They played at the Lowest J. Tool Center. Then there was the Florida Jades, who played at Bookerton, Florida, at the Florida Atl Atlantic University Arena here. Then there was the Fresno Flames, who was based out of Fresno, California. They played at Selen Arena. Then there was the Halifax Windjammers, and that team eventually went into the uh, National Basketball League, based out of Halifax, at the Halifax Metro Center. Then there was the Hamilton Skyhawks, which also was in that league as well, the National Basketball League. They were based out of uh, Hamilton and played at the Cops Coliseum. Then there was the Illinois Express here, played out of Springfield, Illinois. They were in the Prairie Capital Convention Center. And then the Jacksonville Stingrays were also in the league. Based on Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville Coliseum where they played. Then there was the Las Vegas Silver Streaks. Based on the Las Vegas, Nevada. At the Thomas and Mack Center. Then there was the Memphis Rockers. Who were based out of Memphis, Tennessee. At the Mid-South Coliseum. Then there was the Nashville Stars. Based out of Nashville, uh, Tennessee. Played at Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Then there was the Saskatchewan Storm here. They were based out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Played at Saskatchewan Place here. And then there was the Vancouver Nighthawks, who were based out of Vancouver, BC. And they actually played in BC Place. And then there was the Winnipeg Thunder, who were based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. And they played at the Winnipeg Arena. Then there was the Worcester Counts. that They were played out of Worcester, 
Massachusetts, the Worcester Center. And then the last one was the Youngstown Pride, who played at Youngstown, Ohio, at the the Highly Center there. And then there was a, definitely a bunch of international teams. The Abruzzo All Stars, who were based out of Abruzzo, Italy. And then there was the Bahamas Nationals, played in the Bahamas. And then there was the Estonian Nationals, which also have, was based out of Estonia, Finland, and Greece. And then there was a Holland team that was based out of the Netherlands and Italy. And then there was the Kiev All Stars in Kiev, Ukraine, and Norway. And then there was the Soviet Union of the USSR at the time there. So there were some international teams that toured here. So uh, you can take a look at uh, on the Wikipedia page and how long they were playing here. So that is the overview of the World Basketball League. So as I say, the Calgary 88s. They were a professional basketball team, franchise-based here in Calgary, from 1988 to 1992, and they played in the World Basketball League, as I just briefly went over. The 1992 season saw folded before the season, the season was completed. So they played four full seasons, and they were in their fifth season here. The 88s played their home games at then called the Olympic Saddle Dome. The best players during their time in Calgary consisted of, there was Jim Thomas, who was based out of Indiana College here. I'm going to say the best player that played for the 88s is Chip England, who was from Duke here. And my understanding is Chip England, looking it up here, he is actually currently part of the coaching staff of the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA here. He also was an assistant coach with uh, the Denver Nuggets and the Detroit Pistons here. And he's been coaching in the NBA since 1999 up to now here. So, uh, there's a little bit of Calgary 88s in the NBA there. That's Chip England there, and I think he is the best player that played for the 88s here. Then we had Daryl McDonald from Texas A&M, and then John Spencer from uh, Howard Hugh, and then Chris Childs here, and I do remember that Chris Childs, and this is the same one. Yes, he did play for the Toronto Raptors. He also played for the New Jersey Nets after the 88s, as well as the New York Knicks. So uh, a little bit of Toronto Raptors history with the Calgary 88s here. So that's Chris Childs here. Then you had Kelby Stuckley, who was from Southwest Missouri. Then Ronald Gray from St. Louis. And then Jerry Strollman from Utah here. And then there was uh, Nikita Wilson for LSU here. He has actually a page on Wikipedia here. He also has played in various leagues. Actually, he briefly played with the Portland Trailblazers first before coming to the Calgary 88s here. And then there's Carlos Clark here. Doesn't give a college here, but did he also play? He was with the Boston Celtics earlier in his career there. And then there's David Henderson. Doesn't mention college here, but he's from North Carolina. And he actually went to Duke here. Did he play? Yeah, he spent some time with the Philadelphia 76ers in the NBA here. And there's also a college coach there. And then there's Andre Turner here, who... Uh, was a play with the basketball, but he never played in the NBA there. And then there's Sidney Lowe, Kelsey Weems, Perry Young, and there's John Hedgewood. Coach Corey Gaines, or Corey Gaines, who was an assistant coach in the NBA with the Washington Wizards right now. He definitely played with uh, the 76ers, the Nuggets, many teams here, including the New York Knicks. So we definitely have had some players that have played in the uh, this league that have played in the NBA as well as coached as well here. And oh yeah, I mentioned character coaches I missed right there. They included Mike Thibault, who was the uh, first coach, who I think he actually is in the WNBA right now with the Washington Mystics here. He was also an assistant with the Chicago Bells and the Los Angeles Lakers before he coached with the Calgary 88s here. And he also coached as an assistant with the Milwaukee Bucks here, and actually he recently was the WNBA Coach of the Year, and he was the Coach of the Year for the Calgary 88s in 1998, so the first season there, and then Robert Lyons here. So in five seasons of the Calgary 88s, we had a pretty good record here, and actually gone to the league finals a few times when they were playing the championship. We were 157 and 78 during this time here, so that's kind of the overview of the Calgary 88s here. So let's take a look at this ABR website here. It's one of these older printed off websites here. So I kind of looked at the 
some of the franchise history. You can read the uh, franchise history on there if you want here. So uh, let's look at uh, how the teams did during the each season here. So in 1988, the first season of the WBL here, the Calgary 88s were actually first in the division here. They were 32 and 22 here. They were also were tied with the Las Vegas Silver Streaks at 32 and 22 here. Then the Youngstown Pride was 28 and 26 here. The Chicago Express was 27 and 27. The Fresno Flames are 25 and 29 here, and the Vancouver Nighthawks were 18 and 36 here. So that was the standings here from this website here. So when it comes to the semifinals here, however, the Calgary 88s lost in the semifinals, 109 to 107 to Chicago Express there, and then the other semifinal series you had the. Las Vegas Silver Streaks beat the Youngstown Pride 105 103 here. So, two close games here. And then the WBL Championship. Las Vegas won the championship 102 to 95 over, over Chicago there. So, that was the top teams there. And how 1988 went. So, in 1989, the Calgary 88s, once again, they were the top team in the league here. As they were at 31 and 13 here. Second place was the Youngstown Pride with a game behind it. 30 and 14 here. Third place was the Illinois Express. They were 29 and 15. Then the Las Vegas Silver Streaks was 26 and 18 there. And then you had the Worcester Counts. They were one. They were 18 and 26 here. And then the Air National teams. Well, they were one and 49 here, and it fits the teams from Finland, Greece, Holland, Italy, Norway, and the Soviet Union there. So uh, that was the standings for 1989 here. So the semifinals here, there were two semifinal series here, and a lot of these games have played in the summer here, like in the offseason of the NBA and hockey here, as where Calgary played in the in the saddle in there. So the WBL semifinals here, well, you had Youngstown beat uh, Illinois in two games here by 100 to 95 and 99 to 97 here. And then the other series, Calgary did play Las Vegas here, and Calgary won that in... Three games, two games to one here. As Calgary won the first game, 122 to 115, and then the second game, we lost to Vegas by one, 116 to 115, and then we beat Vegas, Las Vegas, 120 to 115 there. So that's up the championship here where we took on Youngstown here. However, Youngstown beat Calgary in two games, the best three here. As Youngstown won the first game, 107 to 98, and then 118 to 116 here. So Youngstown. Won the championship, but the 88s were the finalists here. And then 1990 here, how the standings worked out is that Youngstown Pride this time was the top team in the league with a 38 and 8 record here. Then the Las Vegas Silver Streaks were 32 and 14. And then the Calgary 88s, 88s were 29 and 17 here. And then you had the Illinois Express were 27 and 19. Memphis Rockers were 27 and 19. Sketch and Storm were 19 and 27. And then the Erie Wave was 20, 12 and 34, and then the international teams were 5 and 51 here. So uh, then the first round here, actually Calgary did uh, play Erie here, and we beat them in two games by winning 113 to 98 and 135 105 here. And then the other series here, you had Illinois and Memphis here, where Illinois beat Memphis 110 to 108 in overtime here. And then Memphis won the next two games 105 109. 108 98 here and then set up another and then the other first round here you had Las Vegas play Saskatchewan here as Las Vegas swept Saskatchewan 128 124 in overtime and 120 to 107 here so then the semifinals here you had Memphis uh, playing Youngstown here and it was Youngstown that won that series two games to one year and then the other series you had Calgary playing Las Vegas again where Calgary won that series two games once once again Calgary played Youngstown in the championship here. So in the semifinals, you had Memphis beat Youngstown 92-98 in the first game here. And then the second game, you had Youngstown beat Memphis 106-97. Then 107-104 in overtime here. And then when it comes to the other semifinal that Calgary was in, actually Vegas, Las Vegas won the first game 125-112 here, but then Calgary won the next two games to take the series 125-114 and 127-121. So in the championship here, it was a best of five here. Youngstown won the first game 111 to 102 here. 
but then Calgary won the next game, 111 to 106 here. And then Calgary took a 2-1 lead by being Youngstown 105 to 104 here. However, Youngstown won the next two games by being Calgary 123 to 104 and 109 to 99 here. So Calgary once again got to the championship in the second time in three years, but we're on the wrong end of it. Thanks to Youngstown here. And then in 1991, uh, there were two divisions here as the league was bigger here. Calgary was in the North Division, and they were the best team in the North Division and the league here at 37-14, followed by Youngstown Pride at 26-25, and then Saskatchewan Storm was 25-26, Halifax Windjammers were 21-30, and then the Erie Wave was 18-33 here. Then in the Southern Division, it had the Dayton Wings were 36-15, Florida Jades were 30-21 as the win-loss record here, Memphis Rockers were 29-22, and then the Nashville Stars were 23-28. And the international teams were 7-38 here. So then in the playoffs here, in the first round, you had Saskatchewan and Youngstown meet. Actually, this time Saskatchewan swept Youngstown. Well, 105-99 and 108-99 here. And then the next uh, round here, first round here, you had Florida, or taking on Memphis here, as Florida beats Memphis 115-111 in overtime. And then Memphis beats Florida... 120-107 here, and Florida beats Memphis 114-18 in three, two games to one year. As Calgary and Dayton had buys into the semifinal here, so Calgary got to play Saskatchewan in the uh, semifinals here, and we swept Saskatchewan two straight here as we beat them 146-93 in game one, and in game two it was 108-103 to there. So Calgary once again gets to go to the final in the WBL championship here, third time in four years here. And then who does Calgary play? Well, Dayton beat Florida 111 to 107 and 125 to 112. So Calgary gets to play Dayton in the best of five WBL championship here. And once again, unfortunately, Calgary was on the wrong end of the championship here as they got swept in three games here. Dayton won game one, 112 to 96. Game two, 135 to 110. And game three, Dayton won. 120-89 here, so the Calgary 88s, despite having great regular seasons, getting to the championship here, did not win here. So in 1992 here, before the league shut down to the Besmond there, the Dayton Wings were first in the league at the time of the suspension at 26-7 and seven here. The Calgary 88s were second at 22-12. Youngstown Pride was also 22-13 and 13 here. And then the Halifax Windjammers were 19-14. and 14. The Hamilton Skyhawks were 17-17. And then the Winnipeg Thunder was 15-22. and 22. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan Storm, based on Saskatoon, were 12-21. Florida Jades were 9-10 uh, and 10 here. And the Hentons here, Florida and Jacksonville, just abandoned in the season here. And then the Erie Wave also disbanded during the season. They were 12-16. and 16. Then the Jacksonville Stingrays were 5-14. And, and they are also were disbanded, from, as I mentioned there. Then the Eurasian Nationals were 1 in 14. The Euro Brazil Italy All Stars were 1 in 14. The Kiev All Stars were 1 in 14. The Bielmas Nationals are 1 in 14 there. So uh, that was where the standings were as when the league folded and the rest was history. And so that was it for the Calgary 88s here. So when it comes to the All Spark team, there was, uh, there was no one for Calgary for 1988. Or actually, no, there was actually one for Calgary of CAL, Carlos Clark. And in 1989, there was Dave Henderson and Andre Turner were also named All-Stars, or all WBL teams. And then in 1990, Chip England was on there. In 1991, there was no one for the team there. And then there was the all-defensive team here. Jim Thomas was on the team for 1998. 1999, 89, I should say, was Carlos Clark. And then Carlos Clark got it again in 1990, and the one for Calgary in 1991 here. And then there were some Player of the Week honors here. 1988, the only there were two Calgary team players. There was Jim Thomas for the week of May 1988, May 22nd, and then Sydney Love. Is there Sydney Lowe here in 1988, August 7th there? And then 1991 here, was there any Calgary players here? Well, there was George Jackson the week of July 30th, 1989. And Dave Henderson, the week of August 20th in 1989. Then 1990 here, it was May 27th. Here was Perry Young here. 
And then July 1st of 1990 was Chip England here. And those were it for the All-Star Honors here, according to his website here. And then there was the Sixth Man of the Year Award. Well, two Calgary 88s won it. In 1988 was Chip England. And 1991 was Kelsey Weems. As mentioned, Coach of the Year. 1988 was Mike Thibault. And then Most Value Player, there was no 88s that won. Player of the Year for 91, no Calgary 88s. Most Valuable All-Star Game, there was no Calgary 88s, or his name of the Slam Dunk Competition. And then the three-point champion, this is where Chip England won in the competition here, as he won it in 1988 and 1989. And then won the All-Star Game, well, Calgary actually hosted the All-Star Game in 1988 by the West Bean East, 131 to 120 here. And then the scoring average here, there was no league leaders for scoring average for the 88s. Rebounding average, well, David Boone actually led the league in 1988 with 9.8 rebounds per game. Assist average, there was no 88 players. Same with steals, block shots. Average, well, Perry Young in 1989 with a 1.13. And then John Hedgewood in 1930, or 1.30. 1 that would be a lot of block shots in the game there. And then the field goal percentage, there were no uh, 88s there. But three-point percentage here. In 1989, 90, 91, Chip England led the league. And in 1989, it was 513. Same with 1990 and 494 in 1991 here. And then three throw percentage, Chip England once again was the league leader in three straight years in 1989, but 864. 1990, he bettered that with a 936. And then in 1991, it was 935 here. And then the coaches here, well, Mike Thibault was the Coach in 1988, and then Corey Russell was in 1989, and then Roger Lyons from 1989 to 1992 here. So we had three coaches during the five seasons at the Calgary 88s here. So that's basically all the uh, stuff that I can pull out for the Calgary 88s history based on league leaders here. I couldn't really find any rosters for the five seasons here, but I think the standings and uh, standings and league leaders and award winners. It's good enough here, and also that logo for the Calgary 8s is sweet, I would say. It almost looks similar to the Chicago Bulls uh, jerseys here. But the last thing here is that I went to the, there was a fun while it lasted net website here that I'll also put in the description here. And I'll definitely, I'm going to share some relics here. There's definitely were some interesting uh, relics in terms of old programs, old pictures here. And that's I would say it's definitely worth putting at the end of this video here, especially, there's definitely one picture here that looks very Jordan-esque, where you have a player going into the air there, you see the Calgary skyline, the red sky, and the moon there, man, that looks sweet here, so uh, I'm going to credit the Funball Lasted Net there for uh, why this to share some relics of the Calgary 88s here, but I definitely remember the Calgary 88s, you know, that existed here, definitely, you know, they had a successful season. Just couldn't quite finish off the deal to win the championship here. But I'm going to say that definitely was probably the most successful run that Calgary have had of a basketball team. I think after them and the league folded and lost the 88s here. Well, I already talked about the outlaws there that they only existed the one season there before the league folded here. And then later in the series here, I'll talk about the drillers and crush here. That there was other semi-professional basketball teams that I think this is a tough market for being a basketball team because I don't think the culture is right there and then I mean there's obviously you know pockets of basketball fans and I do casually follow the NBA I'm not intensely in it. I would say growing up I mean the Chicago Bulls were you could say my favorite team I did own some Bulls merchandise or t-shirts there that was given to me because that was during the height of the Michael Jordan there, there, and I played some NBA games, and I definitely loved the NBA Jam from uh, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis there. And I think there was like a world basketball game I remember playing in the 16 era that had some of those international teams. I didn't see Calgary in that game there, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a licensed game. But I do follow, casually follow the NBA. I could say right now my favorite team has to be the Raptors as a pro Canadian there, and was sweet to see him win the NBA championship here, but I'm going to say there was definitely some notable alumni that played for the Calgary 88s that uh, 
spent some time in the um, NBA, either before or after. And I'm going to say Chip England is the best 88 of them all, being that he was definitely best at three throws, three-point percentages, and just being the complete player as he won the six-man award. And, you know, a successful coaching career in the NBA, as he now is with the San Antonio Spurs coaching staff as of the 1920 season there. So, uh, what do you, what memories do you have of the Calgary 88s? I think this is the basketball team that I'm going to say most Calgary sports fans missed most here, and I would say I was, you know, in my, still in my younger youth there, and I, I think I might have actually gone to some Calgary 88 schemes. I can't say yes or no with 100% the fit of confidence there. I know I've watched some basketball at this at the Saldom. I know that uh, there were a couple of Harlem Globe shotters, but that's a, you know, touring thing, but uh, I think I do remember going to some 88 schemes, but I don't know that for sure. But the other thing I do remember is back when the Vancouver Grizzlies were in Vancouver, now they're in Memphis, that the preseason tournament there has one of the you know, best Canadian basketball players of all time. James Naismith there, they, they had the Raptors and Grizzlies. They toured uh, cities across the Canada there, and they played a preseason tournament there, and whoever had the best won the Naismith Cup. And I remember do watching Grizzlies and Raptors in the Salem during the preseason, and I did say, you know, if Calgary did have uh, an NBA team, I would definitely support the NBA a lot more, but I don't think we have the market enough for it, and you know, after the 88s and then, you know, the outlaws in the league. And I'm going to say these independent semi-pro Canadian ba basketball leagues uh, is already on shaky ground here. But uh, I just don't feel the culture is here in the western part of the country here as much as it is out in the east there. And I think the Raptors' influence definitely helps in that. And the culture, I think, is out there more. But, uh, I mean, do you have any members of the Calgary 88s? Uh, what relics do you like from the past or... Uh, any favorite players, moments? I mean, I was still, I know it existed. I remember the team, but uh, it definitely, uh, I was too young to really fully appreciate it here. But this is definitely another team in my Remember the Calgary series. So I think that's all I'm going to say I'm at here before I call it a close here. So as I say here, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, home the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, and formerly of the 88s here, and I think this was the most famous best basketball team that Calgary's ever had in their sports history here, and I'm going to say this is the closest that Calgary has gotten to the NBA. I don't see the NBA coming to Calgary anytime soon here, and I think it won't be as profitable here, especially if you had someone with uh, billions of dollars in deep pockets that say, hey, I want to have the Calgary whatever here, and play in Calgary, I just don't see us being a market where we could potentially acquire some high-end talent who want to come play in Calgary as opposed to, let's say, in Los Angeles or Miami or proud franchise like Boston or Chicago, but that's my opinion, but uh, I don't think we're a big enough market to sustain it. I also do personal blogs, attempt to call me, and I also do share my experience, let's say I'm on the road or at a sporting event here. So if that all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch to follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey, you know what you need to do. I also have my other social media links down in the description below there, and and I know that eventually, if things ever get better here, I will have to definitely need to buy some merchandise from uh, Sea of Dead, and I maybe get some Calgary 88s merchandise here, but now I haven't really seen any much merchandise or any old jerseys from the past. I mean, do you by chance any own, like, original? from during those days there and I definitely find those neat relics on that fun while it lasted that I'll put at the end of this video is uh you know it's definitely nice to keep the history here so that's what I have for episode four remember the Calgary 88s I know in the next episode for episode five here I'm definitely gonna be interested in how I'm gonna pull out that episode here I'm gonna talk about the Calgary Tigers the first you know professional hockey team that I represent Calgary and then I also did see that there was a rugby team that was also named the Tigers here. So that will be the next episode here and I mean I'll try to pace out the series series here and you know if I can release an episode every other week or a couple episodes a month here I'll be happier but I know I've been busier with everything and plus my other existing content here that 
that episodes three and four are a little closer together, but, you know, I'm just going to keep pressing on and release these episodes when I can, and I know they're puts in a lot more work to do some research, try to find some relics, and put a little extra production in, but hopefully you are enjoying my Remember the Calgary series, bringing back some memories from the past here, but I'm proud that I've gotten up to four episodes here, and there's still many, many more here, and towards the end of the series, I did purposely put a couple teams towards the end that I think Calgarians missed the most here. So, as I say, go Flames go. Let's go 88s or whatever you have to say there. And, you know, maybe there'll be a revival sometime down the road. Who knows? Maybe maybe some bizarre thing that Calgary will be an NBA market or we'll call ourselves the 88s. I don't know. I can dream, but it's, I don't see it happening anytime soon. But, as I say... I'll see you in the next video, and hopefully you keep enjoying my content here. So thank you.